Hey, I wanted to show a little trick that I use all the time to make panels that are common in sci-fi scenes, but really useful in all kinds of different situations. Here's a few different examples of where I've done this so you can see kind of what you can do with it. You can achieve this with Booleans and some add-ons like box cutter and things like that. But in my experience, things get a little confusing and hard to manage because they're generating different objects and there's kind of complicated Boolean relationships between them. And it's easy to, to really kind of mess those up. So in most situations, I prefer doing it the way that I'm gonna show you right here. Okay, let's start simple and I'll use a plane for this example. First, give it some geometry to work with. And next, select some edges and mark them sharp with Control E. These will be the edges of the panels. Now add an edge split modifier, deselect edge angle. If you don't, every edge that's over that angle will get split, we don't really want that. Okay, after that, add a solidify modifier and you don't need to check only rim, but I do because I rarely need the mesh to be manifold and I don't love how bulky it tends to get if this option is, uh, is kept off. Play with the thickness, but keep in mind that the less thickness you have, the less defined the panel edges can be because this, this solidified depth is really gonna define how deep the grooves around the panels are gonna be basically. And I kind of like to do this step in X-ray mode so I can kind of see things a little bit better. Now to give the panel some definition, add a bevel modifier after this. Give it something like three segments and reduce the amount until it looks good. And then give it smooth shading. And now you can add more panels really wherever you want by marking them sharp with Control E. And if you need more geometry, just go ahead and add it in. That's pretty much it, but let's keep going because there's some more tricks I wanna show you. Now you might say that's great for rectangular panels, but what about circles? Well, we can do that too with loop tools. And if you don't have loop tools, go into your preferences and go into add-ons and just look for loop tools and then add that uh, or activate that add-on. So how do you do this? Well, you select some quad faces, right click and select loop tools and go to circle and then select the circle's edge and mark it sharp. And that's how you get circles. Now, sometimes I don't want the panels corners to be kind of sharp and pointy like that. So I like to soften things up a little bit. And to do that, insert a subdivision surface modifier and make sure it's right after the edge split. But then what if you want some corners to be kind of curvy like that and other corners to be sharp? How do you do that? This is easy. You can go into edit mode, select the vertices you want to have more defined corners and in the item properties, crank the vertex crease up to one. And you'll find you'll actually have to do this to seal up any split edges that terminate at the end of a mesh or intersecting split edges. And the great thing about this is you haven't committed to anything. You can unmark any edges you want and since we have nice quad flow going all over the place, this won't fall apart if you deform the mesh or use this technique over curved surfaces like a sphere or a torus or a cylinder or something like that. And sometimes I like to put one last subdivision surface modifier at the very end just to smooth things up one more level. Okay, the last trick I'll show is how you can inset or extrude these panels if you don't want them flush with the surrounding surface. Now the first step is to separate the panel geometry from everything else. So go into edit mode and select the panel faces and hit P and then separate by selection. Now select just this new object that you created, enter edit mode, select everything with A, and then press Alt S, which is going to scale these faces along their normals. And then from here, you can increase the solidify thickness if you need to, or even add more panels with the same steps from earlier. And that's pretty much it. Hope this little trick can help you in whatever project uh, that you're doing. Thanks for watching.